The following is a presentation of Jersey Sports Zone. Last time on Season on the Brink. We're one of those top four teams and we get to play for a conference championship. That's what they do. That's awesome. Just run over his face. That's way wrong. Hey, same thing for you. Hey, this ain't calculus, okay? Go whip their ass. That's what this is, okay? Come here, guys, come here. That's what you got to do on the field. That kind of intention. Come on. What happened last year is last year. It's a new year for everybody, for every team. Everybody's zero and zero. Last year means nothing. Welcome to the Steve and Jelly era at Bergen Catholic. After splitting snaps as a sophomore, Angeli, one of the top rated junior quarterbacks in America, gets the full set of keys to Vito Campanelli's offense. Quarterback sequence of those rolls to his right, looking, fires. Got a man, that's a completed catch. Everyone on campus knows the kind of talent there is under center. He has such a professional approach to football. It is so important to him. Um, you know, you, you can get texts at 11 at night or phone calls about a play that happened. Uh, a coach play 13 on the press under pressure period. Like, you know, he is, it is so important to him. And he just, he wears it all day long. And uh, that's what you want in a quarterback. And I think that any kid that plays with him understands that he mandates that respect because of the effort and attitude that he comes out here with every day. Yeah, it looks real good. Just like everyone's gelling from last year. Like Steve got some time last year. He was like 50-50, but this year like we're really like in the zone. Like we're really flowing this year. Everything's just coming together. Am I, what, just to, hey, outside are down. Outside are down. Hey, Jay, you're good. You're good. You're good. What are you? Stay up. You know what you have. Yeah, you're up. You're up. He's up. Hey, he's the boy. He's the boy. He's the boy. Let's go. Get set. Servo. Down. To go. But that's not to say there haven't been any hiccups in preseason preparations. Still a junior, Angeli learns and grows every day. You know, I think that's definitely, you know, part of the game. You know, in football, there's going to be good, there's going to be bad, but, you know, it all it only really matters how you respond to the bad. And, you know, if we have a practice like that where it's on our best practice, we make mistakes, you know, we experience adversity. It's all about how we come back from that, how we respond the next play. And that's kind of why, you know, we're kind of building that culture. You know, we're going to be tough through adversity. You know, we're going to win the next rep, and, you know, we're going to get better from everything we learn from. Have some water, too. And when faced with adversity, we see the moment a leader is born. You guys gotta play together, man. You gotta help each other out. Make calls. Why are you hitting your teammate? Why are you ever putting your hands hitting your teammate? You should never ever do that. I don't care what the goes on. You should never hit your teammate. Pick your guys up, play positive, and play with heart, man. That's all you gotta do. Let's go, bring it up, 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 bring it up,
Of every aspect of his game, he cherishes being the guy the most. You know, it's, it's definitely a part of the job. You know, if you're the quarterback of the team, everyone looks to you, you know, on and off the field. You got to be that guy that, you know, they could come to you for anything, that you can get them better, you could lead them in everything, just overall make them a better player. So when stuff like that happens, you know, I got to reel him back in, get him back into, you know, kind of going in the right direction, you know, just keep playing football. Our coaches uh, pride ourselves on um, on working every every single play 100%. So uh, we pass that tradition down onto onto our uh, younger players. So it started off with older running backs that I learned from, and I'm just trying to carry the tradition on. Recruiting during a pandemic has wreaked havoc on high school football seniors, but Rumson Fairhaven already has two Division One FCS commits. Running back John Volker will follow in brother Charlie's footsteps in the Ivy League at Princeton. Safety Ryan Ruane is locked in at Holy Cross and is one of New Jersey's best in the secondary. You know, just working on deflection, you know, when the ball's up in the air, try not to look back. You know, you want to look at defenders' eyes, watch their hands when they open. That's when you turn back and try to swat it down. The ball you caught against everybody Catholic. <laughs> oh, what? The ball you caught against everybody Catholic was right at your chest. If it was anywhere else, we would have been in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> the momentum quickly swings the other way. Two plays after the turnover, the pass picked off. Ryan Ruane jumping the route and see you later. 69 yards. Rumps and Fairhaven with a 20 to nothing lead. Losing to Wall last year. And then now, you know, there was a threat this past year with not even having a season. And you appreciate it so much more every, every snap and every play. That's why we always say before we break out, you know, take every rep 100% because you know when the last one's going to be. Okay, so if he presses you, convert it. And just take off, take the top off. No one's catching it. Right? How legit is uh, Volker's speed? I, I, mean, I, I haven't seen a kid faster than him in, in a long time. I remember watching him when I first moved to town in like fifth grade, just out, completely outrunning kids and sprints and embarrassing kids. So I, he's probably the fastest kid. Definitely for sure. I think, I think definitely possible in the state that John Volker's got legit speed. He takes the short pass from Colin Coles, splits the defense, and right there is elite speed. When John Volker gets a little bit of space to work with, he's as dangerous as anyone in the state. 65 yards for Volker. Well, in game, uh, I can attest this last year because I played wide receiver. Um, like, just he would take the ball and then he'd be gone and I'd be running after him and it wasn't even close. So, um, playing next to him, it's, it's pretty ridiculous just how fast he is. And, um, for people that haven't seen him run, um, it's definitely a sight to see. A different sight to see? Ruane versus Volker, trying their hand at kicking. You could do it, Ruane. Cobo, don't even take side steps. Go straight at it. Don't do that. Just go straight at it. You'll get it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On. That's why I don't kick. Holy Cross is new kicker. That's a phenomenal onside kick if you think about it. Yeah, could be. Potentially. Maybe in the near future. You got a new job or what, man? Yeah, I hope so. 40. Delete that. You have that video? I have it. Right, right down the middle. Yeah. I, I need some proof. People won't believe me. What's on tap the rest of the night? Uh, I don't know. Just, just rest and recover. We had a hard day of practice, so uh, you know, I'll just go home, maybe drink some water, have a nice dinner. That's pretty much it. Well, we'll see you tomorrow, man. Yeah. All right, we'll do. Scholarship being pulled is a very, very, you know, disappointing thing. 
you know, but unfortunately, there's a lot of kids in his same situation. So we've had that conversation. He's got to ramp it up. I hope Mike gets a chance. Um, you know, he knows that that he's got to get out of the gate fast. That he's got to get film out immediately, and uh, he's been practicing hard. So hopefully, he's motivated to to take advantage of that. Get flat, get flat. Bump and roll, good roll, roll. Finish on top. Good. At six foot four, 230 pounds, Mike Rhodes stands out on the line for Ocean City. He just needs to find a way to stand out for college coaches. The coronavirus created a chaotic recruiting cycle, and his lone Division I FCS offer was pulled. With other recruits rushing to commit, Rhodes ended up on the wrong end of a numbers game. His number one focus now, a renewed sense of urgency. You don't know how many games you're going to get. So every single play, you got to play, just put everything on the line, acting like it's your last, because you don't know who's going to be there, like what is going to happen, whether it's just a perfect setup for a sack, for an interception, for anything like that. He's got to put good tape out, and I think he'll do that. He's a, he's a very, very uh, good player for us. His motor and just his will to get after the quarterback. I mean, he's a strong, big kid, fast, honestly, but his effort into every play, I mean, he just wants to get downhill and make tackles and make sacks. He has a tremendous work ethic. Um, you know, he's a three-sport athlete, football, basketball, track kid. Um, during the track season, during the basketball seasons, he's in the weight room with me at 6 a.m. getting a lift in, you know, during other sports seasons. Uh, he wants to put in the work and he wants to get better. Rhodes may lack a Division I offer at the moment, but the senior and his coaches don't lack the confidence and the commitment to trust the hard work will pay off. He's going to end up in a, in a great position at a great program in college. Um, you know, that's going to be a good fit for him to play football and most importantly academically. You just got to play with your heart out. I coached some when I got out of college, then I went into business for myself, then I worked in a uh, psychiatric hospital with adolescents, and then I went back to school, got a couple degrees in, in counseling, and ended up here at Notre Dame about uh, 15 years ago. Coached at uh, Lawrenceville Prep School, then I've been coaching here for about 10 years, and then uh, here I am. If there was ever a player's coach, it'd be Sean Clancy. In his first year at the helm, Clancy helped lead Notre Dame football to its best season since 2009. And while the fire may be there... Drive through, drive through, drive through! Go get it! Hey, two hands though, man, two hands! It's the personal and challenging environment he's created for the program that makes it run the way it does. That man never gave up battling uh, all sorts of illnesses and things his whole life. Growing up in a communist country, having to learn to be a priest while he's digging in uh, mines underground. And then of course, Mike Tyson, the greatest athlete ever to walk the face of the planet until he decided that he wasn't. And then everything fell apart. So I like both those guys on either side of the coach's office. Makes us remember that you have to stick to what you believe in and you have to work every day to get where you want to get. Because you can be on the top for a while, but if you don't keep doing the work and you don't keep believing in yourself, you're not going to stay there. Don't let me beat you! Oh, holy oh, God. Yeah. <sighs> Who's into biology and science? Oh, I'm in biology now, so no, no, no. no. Come on, who wants to answer? You know who Alexander the Great's father was, right? Absolutely. I know it, but... Yo, someone has to give you guys the same questions every time. In North America, there was a new kind of wolf just oh. identified within the last 10 years. What is the name of that wolf? Red wolf? Oh, it's the North American brush wolf. How do you not know that? How do you know that? Oh, you know that? Oh, like you you know that? Don't the questions may be difficult, but it's easy to see how Sean Clancy has helped Notre Dame regain power in Mercer County. And if the coach can continue to draw players into Lawrenceville, the Irish will be celebrating much more than a perfect regular season in the future. It's an honor to play for him. Uh, amazing coach. He really leads the guys out here, keeps them straight. And uh, that's why we're a championship team. It's, it's actually interesting, you know, these questions and stuff actually help us, you know, doesn't really help us knowledge-wise, but it helps us, like, just in general, just, like, conditioning and stuff. Why? Because I don't want to ask him to do something I'm not willing to do myself. We talk about it a lot. We do a character curriculum program, 
And one of the things there is we are we as the coaches are never going to give up. We're never going to not do the work. We're never not going to put in the work, and we ask the kids to do the same thing. So I've always run with them, and uh, it's just something, again, that I don't want to ask the kids to do something I'm not willing to do myself. But uh, I'm not getting any faster, that's for sure. Yo, how hard is it to not cross the f***ing line? <laughs> Being lazy? You guys just don't care. The intensity of practice doesn't wane as the end of training camp nears. With the schedule Bergen Catholic plays, it's no surprise that coaches continue to push the pace. Right now, I just want us to practice like, hey, he's not, he ain't getting All right, All right so we're going to press him, press him. We want to get him to get his head outside, right back in. Let's go about 75 today, right? I want these guys, the, the, the three technique or the guys here, I want you to get a nice get on for him so we can defeat the double team, okay? But what's it like for the unsung heroes of the team? For special teams players, it's all about patience and perfection. So it's really about staying locked in, uh, staying focused during practice, getting all your work in, all your snaps, all your footwork, and when the time, when the lights go on and the time comes for you to go do your job, uh, it's about doing your job and, uh, and being part of the team. Specialists don't get the same recognition as the starting quarterback. But when the Crusaders roll out the punt team or field goal unit over the next two years, a guaranteed five-star player will be on the field. We're talking about Logan Rager, who has the unique distinction of being the number one nationally ranked long snapper in his class. Do you think these guys know that you're a, a, a five-star snapper? Do you, how many people actually know that on this team? No, nah, everyone knows, but you know we keep it low-key because... Like you said, you really don't, uh, long snappers really don't hear their name unless they uh, mess up. And that's what I chose. I, I know that's how it goes. And I'm sticking with it. Truth be told, it's an inglorious position. But when the game's on the line, all eyes go to him. It's as much about mental toughness as it is physical toughness. Because in, in, in this particular situation, uh, there is no upside. There's only downside. So people will remember a bad snap. They're never going to remember a good snap. My dad taught me the five second rule and it's it's not if you spill food on the ground you have five seconds to pick it up. If you have a great play, you have a great snap, you have a great block, cool, uh, celebrate it, forget about it in five seconds, you have a bad snap, hopefully you don't have a bad snap, bad block, forget it in five, in five seconds, you move on. Even, even, even! Black, black, black! Ready! Yeah, so my long snapping journey really started in uh, sixth grade, my first year playing football, and you know, I really couldn't find the spot on the team, you know, tight end. I was trying, linebacker was trying, uh, nothing was really working out, you know, I was the new kid. But I realized that our, our long snapper wasn't the best, and I went home one day, and me and my dad talked about it. He's like, you want to you wanna get on the field? And I was like, yeah. So he was like, all right, we're going to go on YouTube, we're going to start, uh, we're going to see to learn how to try to long snap. And I picked it up very quickly, went out to practice the next day, uh, snapped a bunch of great balls, and I was a starting long snapper, and I took it from there. And New Jersey long snappers have a proven track record of success. Southern Regional's Clark Harris is now in his 12th season with the Cincinnati Bengals. Middletown native Rick Lovato won a Super Bowl in 2018 with the Philadelphia Eagles. Wall Township's Joe Shimko was an All-American in 2019 and now starts at NC State. Rager hopes to be next. And I fell in love with it. You know, I'm a little bit of a uh, perfectionist, and uh, I, I just I just love trying to master the craft, and I became obsessed with it, and um, I'm glad I'm doing it. It's a unique job, but someone has to do it. Rager is more than willing. Well, it's really about doing your job, right? Logan is a great kid. He's been very patient. Uh, he worked really hard, really hard in the weight room. Uh, got his times down, got his blocking much improved, which is something he's been working on, and he looks really good. Uh, and we just hope that when uh, the lights go on, he's ready to go. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's what I chose to do. I, I, lo I love the pressure of it. I love going in, help my team. You know, we're the only, we're the only guy on the team that's got to be perfect 100% of the time. And... I love being a part of that and just helping my team out on specials. Pretty good pilot there. I, I, 
<laughs> and just stand here. <laughs> it is tough though. There were no drones flying overhead when Jerry Schulte began his coaching career. The RFH headman, along with assistants John Wagner and Rich Mosca, bring over 125 years of high school football wisdom. You're going to grab and swat, but if the ball's underthrown to your inside, then you want to pick. Okay, the other day we knocked the ball down. We should have picked it. We just figured, well, we're supposed to knock it down. Yeah. We'll do it here, too. If you, if you got a chance to pick it, though, pick it if it's behind the guy. If it's, a, if it's in the right spot, then you got to do your thing. If it's behind you, pick it, okay? Wagner is the all-time wins leader at Roselle Park and guided Point Pleasant Beach through the turbulent times of 9-11 and Hurricane Sandy. Coaching the Rumson DBs in a pandemic is a new challenge. You're overcoming something, and this is the place we want them to be. They, they, they get very comfortable when they come here. Uh, you know, it's just a battle out there, and, and the world's a, a, in a crazy time right now. But uh, it's just exciting to have them back out here. And the kids are pretty resilient. You know, when they're out here, they, they, they focus on what we're doing. And then when we leave the field, we just tell them to be careful. You know, it's time to be careful out here. Dip, dip, rip. Mosca begins his 50th year on the sidelines and works with a stellar defensive line that will rotate five experienced seniors and junior D1 prospect Aiden Moriarty. I see you had a smile on your face probably because there's been a little more hitting today, right? I love hitting, my favorite thing. You know, I get to watch him and Vaughn kill kids. It's the best. A lot of fun. Get in front of me. I'm going to put my life into your hands. That's better, Jack. Because I could have a back Buzz take him. Fish. And you're to the weak yeah, side. You'll be all right, be son. You're learning something okay. here. You guys are going to have to keep eating spaghetti. The senior guys really need to be here to show what they can do for their future if they want to continue playing college football. And there's some kids here who can play some pretty good college football, I think. You to me. It makes my life easier. So not only make me look good, you're going to look better. <laughs> He's the best. He's really funny and energetic. He just loves to be out here every day and coach us out. So it's fun. So you like this number five? He's pretty good. Oh, I love him. No, I just love him. He's the man. He's someone that's best. An specialist I've ever worked with. The Rumson Fairhaven coaching staff my is career. the perfect blend of I mean, old he's school within the top and new school. Five. When the temperature goes down, RFH has a knack of turning their already solid defense up a notch. Vaughn Factor with a tackle for loss. As good as he is, he still works hard. That's what makes the difference of why he's so good. And he's a cool kid. We have literally three Hall of Fame coaches that are here, and it's outstanding. They're great guys. They're great for the program. Kids love them. I mean, these defensive line guys, they they love Coach Mosca. And if I have the energy he has at 72, 73, however old he is, I'll be pretty happy about that. I tell you, when I came in and did some things, you see how I work, they respond. Yeah. I, I really. And they love you. Yeah. Since I love them because, man, I tell you, I love this game. That's number one. I love the game. And if you love the game, you got to love your players, no matter how good or bad they are. And I've always loved all my players every place I've been, win or lose. Fitting in is hard to do. That's why some members of the Irish prefer to stand out. As much as a team needs talent and athleticism, it also needs fire, grit, and strength. No one knows more about that than John McKenna. The strength and conditioning coach has been at it for over 30 years, and in that time, every player that stepped between the lines for Notre Dame has had to go through him. I've been doing it over 30 years. Um, and, uh, I was a football coach here, and then I retired as that, and I'm just a strength coach. But I think that makes me a better strength coach because that's all I worry about. But uh, I care about the kids. Um, this is my passion, and I love what I do. Okay, and then bring it back and repeat that. It's like over a circle and bring it up. You know what? Keep it up. We got to get you loose. A strong mind, strong body, strong uh, faith. And, that, and that's kind of our statement, you know, the total body. Uh, and I want these kids to know that, uh, that I care about them, I love them, and that I'm here for them. And I think that's important. They need to have that kind of support. Hamstring, 20 and 20. Work it out, stretch it out. 
It's your body, not mine, fellas. And the torque you have is unreal. Big torque guy, eh? Yeah. yeah. Intensity is a must on the field, but a team needs a bit of comic relief, especially in recent times. Go ahead, Huggy, what do you got, baby? I say funny, because <laughs> even though the hard times is now, we always make fun of the future and stuff. Nice. Yeah. Nice, <laughs> Luckily, players like Rasheen Young come to work hard each practice and make the trenches that much more enjoyable for everyone. We got specials now, okay? We're all close missing. Okay, hold on, Woo! All right, down on the goal line. Extra point, field goal. I clap, you know what I'm saying? Coach, Coach McCabe, you're doing too much. I got kids, man. Coach, Coach, Coach. Shut up. I gotta get home, I gotta get in the shower, and then I gotta get back up in a couple hours. You gotta eat. You You should have let me got my hands while I was in there in the first place. Coach, I always get on your bad side. You just start laughing. Uh, Rasheen, R A S H E E N. Your stuff looks pretty, man. Your mom's gonna see it. I don't see it. It just makes me happy, you know. Just, just making everybody else happy, you know. It's just, just what I do. I think it just boosts everybody else's energy and all that stuff. So it's just, you know, it's, it doesn't bring everybody down. Yo, watch out, watch out, all right, Mr. Pines, what do you got, baby? Uh, the word I would use to describe this team is uh, uh, fun, because I like to compete and I like to beat the s. <laughs> me. As the best player on the field and on the team at all times, I like to take pride in the fact that we compete and we have fun and we win games. That's, That's very true. There you go, there you go baby. Mr. Vines, you run like a cartoon character. Oh, oh, Matthews is another one. He's a dog. He's going to get you going 110%. Could give it all you got every single play. Matthews is, is a guy that you want to play behind. There's nothing wrong with getting excited. Okay, that's a good thing. You can get excited. You can pat each other on the helmet. Enthusiasm. Effort. It rubs off. Uh, you could tell he's been around for a while by uh, how long his beard is. And uh, he just started yelling at us right away. <laughs> You guys understand that, D-line? As head coach, Kevin Smith is the face of Ocean City football. But he's not the only voice on the practice field. Defensive coordinator Sean Matthews' voice carries halfway to the 9th Street Bridge. Charlie, you're competing for playing time. Kyle Hendricks, you're competing for playing time. Ho, you're competing for playing time. If you want an invitation to come play scout team, there it is. Good job! Let's go! Good job! Not bad, Nick. Here we go. Let's go. On the hop. On the hop. On the hop. On the hop. Roll to your left, Andrew. Here you go. Good. Nice and flat. Roll. Good. Good. Two. Finish on top. Good. Nice job, Elijah. I'm loud. I'm energetic. 
Um, I think that helps them. I mean, it might help some guys, it might not. But again, I just want to give these kids a positive experience. High school football, like Coach Smith talked about at the end of the practice, everybody can recall it, you know, whether you played 30 years ago or 10 years ago. It, it should be the best part of their life up to this point. And uh, hopefully my energy just rubs off on them and just gets them to have a positive experience and having fun because that's what high school football should be about. Defensive line coach Mike Eisenstein has a different style of coaching. From fireside chats, to lighting a fire under the backside of his players. A lot of this, okay, I'll take the first day. We were really doing team where maybe you were, you know, not quite concentrating on anything the way you should have. Coach wasn't nowhere to be found. Did you take that play off? Huh. I was trailing. Did you make the tackle? No. Yo, fourth down, let's go. What position do you play? Fourth and four. 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 Tackle. That they call you tackle. We have a great relationship, man. I've been most of these guys have been with me for three years now. Uh, we communicate all year long. We've been exchanging video for months because of the COVID, not being able to see them, and they, they know what I want. But unfortunately, I have to get on them sometimes to get what I want. So we we better overcome because I'm not going to be on the field with him Friday night. He's a great coach. He's been around the game a long time, and he definitely wants what's best for us. And he's been teaching us a lot of great stuff. We got to do a better job on this. I know when I watched the film today, I was we were better than we were yesterday. I mean, Mike's you know 35 years of coaching experience. There's not much that he hasn't seen, so he knows how to uh, how to motivate a kid, and he knows when when to push and when to pull back. And he also knows that you know we got 60 linemen that that can can be starters, and there's only four spots on that D line. So you know, uh, competition's a great motivator, and playing time is the ultimate goal. So yeah, everybody needs to be at their best. Uh, you know, or, or they're going to wind up on the bench. Our goal every day is to be a little bit better and know something we didn't know when we came out here. If they're a little bit better and they, and they learn something, it was a good day, just like in the classroom. Team on three. One, two, three. Team. Coaches and players, teachers and students, their passion for the game feeds off each other. Despite the dangers of a pandemic, both will tell you there's no place they'd rather be than with each other. The chase is on to get to October 2nd and the start of the season. You. Don't let me be you. Oh, holy Coming up on the next episode of Season on the Break. Big country. What day is my birthday? <laughs> Which way are we lining up? During the season, I see him every day. Off season, I talk to him two, three times a week easily, and it's uh, it's really awesome. It really is. It's uh, something I'm very happy I'm able to do. No, you're Kim Kardashian. <laughs> Not true. <at> all. <laughs> No, if anything, you are. You got the hair, you got everything you've done all the I got the Josh, hair. Josh What's the like hair have to do Josh with anything? Like Rob Kardashian. Dude. If anyone is yeah. part of the Kardashians, Coach Wall. Coach Wall is part of the Kardashians. Coach Wall, are you kidding me? You think this is going to get Kardashian ratings, though? I don't know. I do. I really do. Definitely.